there's different ways to build microphone circuits, I should say, condenser microphone circuits. And, um, and we'll go into just a couple of them here. Um, there's an input and an output. The input can be a transistor or it can be a tube. Uh, and the output can be transistors or, uh, or have a transformer. There are other choices, absolutely. You can have tube on both ends. You can have you know, tubes in the front and, and transistors in the back. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to combine these things. But for our purposes, we're just going to look at some of the, the highlights because they affect the kind of sounds we're going to get. Now, you don't need to necessarily take your microphones apart to find out what's in them, especially if you don't own them yet. And you can't very well walk into a store and say, I want to check out this microphone, and then you unscrew it on the tabletop there, right? The store won't be too, too pleased about that. So how do you find out what's in a microphone before you buy it? Uh, well, if you can see a picture of the inside, that'll tell you some things. There's some examples here. You can point out uh, or you can notice a couple of uh, things. Vacuum tube, another vacuum tube, another vacuum tube, more vacuum tubes, right? So that, is, that can affect the sound in some ways. And then these are all transformers. Sometimes they're what's called potted. They're in a can, so you can't see the transformer, which looks like this. Transformer is a stack of, of metal, uh, very thin pieces of metal, with coils of wire wrapped around and then a bunch of wires coming out. Sometimes you can't see that construction, you'll just see the can. But if there's a can that looks like this in the bottom of your microphone, chances are there's a transformer inside. Another way to find out what's in a microphone is the Recording Hex website, which goes to great lengths to call this kind of stuff out. So what are some sonic effects of these circuit topology choices? Um, well, I talked earlier about the Sheps style circuit. This is a transformerless design that can be built with very cheap parts and has pretty good fidelity, amazing fidelity, actually. Um, it, uh, it has some benefits, very low distortion, very low noise, excellent transient response. Um, whereas a transformer coupled circuit, and th you know, these are generalizations, um, but sometimes that's the best we can do if we're just trying to make predictions. Transformer coupled circuit, they have the potential for harmonic content. It's not a guarantee. A lot of people think that if you put a transformer on something, it suddenly gets this gooey, gluey, vintage warmth. Not necessarily true. Um, in fact, if you say that to a transformer maker, he'll probably look at you in horror. He'll say, oh my god, no. My transformers pass full frequency response with no distortion whatsoever. Because that's what they're going for. Um, but they don't always succeed. So there is the risk of some coloration uh, if you pass a square wave into one um, and then you plot it on your oscilloscope coming out. You won't see a, a perfect square wave coming back out. You're going to see overshoot and ringing and all kinds of artifacts. Sometimes those are good. Sometimes they sound good. There's no rule, though. Um, this is the goal of the mic designer, to find the collection of components that creates the sound that he or she is going for. But as a microphone buyer, you know, you can draw some general assumptions from the topology choices that were made. Um, transformers often have roll-off. Um, it's something that you would see if you measured a bunch of transformers. It's unusual for them to be perfectly flat from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Typically, you lose something at the top or bottom. Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes it's a good thing. Uh, but again, it's just a, it's an effect of the construction. And then tubes, uh, tubes can add harmonic content, fairly likely to do so, in fact. Um, and there's also a risk of noise in microphonics. Um, microphonics, uh, anyone know what that means? Um, it basically means that the tube itself becomes a microphone. So I find this especially with, with old tubes, vintage tubes. Um, I, I know that if you read uh, gear sluts, they'll tell you that you know, vintage tubes are the only thing possible that's good enough for any microphone, but I've uh, tested a bunch of them, and it's challenging because a lot of these old tubes, um, you know, you can basically take the capsule out of the circuit, and you stick in a little ceramic capacitor instead just to hold the position in the circuit. You pick up the microphone, and you shout at it like this against the tube, and you'll hear yourself. It won't sound good, but you'll hear it. Why? Well, because there are components in the tube that are vibrating in a way that leaks directly into the audio signal path. So that's what microphonics are. If you tap on a microphone and you can hear it, not just acoustically, but you can hear it through the body of the, of the device, that would be microphonics. Also the risk for noise. A lot of tubes uh, are noisy, especially old ones, or they become noisy over time. Uh, not to say it's not worth it sometimes. Um, tubes can do magical things. Uh, what are some of the effects of transformers and to a degree tubes as well? So. Um, so I'll talk about this uh, top graph first. So tubes have a frequency, sorry, transformers have a frequency response. Um, as I said, it's not always linear. Ideally, like if you ask a transformer manufacturer, he would, he would want this to be perfectly flat lines going through here. 
This test was made through a signal injection. So this is not an acoustic test. This is passing in uh, an AC signal, a sine wave, from 10 hertz up to 20 or 30 kilohertz. And so again, the perfect transformer would give you a perfectly flat line. But of these choices, you can see all of them are rolling off the low end. Uh, this AMI transformer in blue is the most of all. So this is m down 5 dB at 10. So the minus 3 dB point's around 20. Not necessarily a bad thing. Most people are not recording 20 hertz all the time. Um, and then that same transformer has a little bump up at 10. It's not a lot, maybe a dB, maybe a half dB. Um, and then this is an odd case. This is a, a transformer that came out of a, a groove tubes Sterling microphone that was basically just not happy in the circuit. So there was some kind of incompatibility between uh, this uh, transformer and the circuit that I tested it in, in that it's down 10 decibels at 10K. So it sounded terrible. You know, it sounded like you'd taken that trouble control on your home stereo and turned it all the way down. It just sounded muddy and dark and bad. Um, and this is why, uh, you know, if you're building microphones, you have to test the transformer because you never know what you're going to get out of it. Uh, a more common thing to look for, um, it's a more subtle effect on the audio, and it's harmonic coloration. Um, so uh, a second harmonic would be a vibration at twice the frequency. Um, and this is the sound of old tube gear, for the most part. Uh, I'm simplifying a bit just for the sake of, of the conversation, but um, one of the reasons people love the sound of old tube microphones uh, is because they create second harmonic or even order harmonics. And that means that for any signal you put in, you get out that signal and then one that's an octave higher. Okay? And it's, it's a, a lower level, right? It's not a chorus effect or a harmonizer or something like that. Um, it's at a lower level, but you can hear it. And, and the way that you hear it is that it sounds like a vintage piece of tube gear. I mean, it's the sound of that gear. And its uh, sonic effect is that it helps a source cut through a mix. Okay? Um, so it's a very desirable effect. Uh, in some cases, again, depending on what you're trying to get to. Um, but you know, as you people are building your mic lockers, this is something that you'd want. Like if, if all of your microphones are transformerless, you know, something that isn't should be high on your list because it's a sound that you don't have and you really can't get any other way. So at the bottom here is a photo of, uh, or rather a graphic representation of harmonic distortion coming from transformers. So this was a signal injection test from a single circuit uh, in which I swapped the transformer for the purposes of the test. The top line is the frequency response. This, uh, this solid set of lines here is the frequency response. Um, and then at the bottom here, so I've zoomed way out. You can see this one's only, this is, 10 dB of, of vertical range here, and this is about 60. Okay, so I've zoomed way out in order to show this effect because the second order harmonics are, look, 40 decibels down, right? So your signal's up here at zero, and your harmonics are down here at, at uh, minus 40, minus 50. So, th so it's well below signal, and yet you can hear it. Um, the solid line at the bottom is even order, or rather second order harmonics, and the dashed line is third order. Uh, now, third order is typically less desirable. Tape decks were famous for making third order harmonics. Um, and so there is that sound that, you know, in some cases you might want to be reaching for, but second order is, is a safer bet uh, because it's, uh, it's always in key. Okay, it's one octave above your signal, it's always in key. Um, and so just to call this out, uh, let's look at 100 hertz. There's a 10 dB spread in the amount of second order harmonics between these three transformers doesn't make any one of them better or worse. It depends what you're going for. But the point is different transformers have a different kind of effect uh, on the sound of the microphone. Here's another effect of, of not just transformers, but circuits in general. Um, so, so this is a picture of waveforms from an audio uh, file of, of drums. So uh, it's the same drums playing the same thing in the same room with the same microphones except for one thing. The microphone capsules were the same, because uh, in this particular microphone, the capsules screwed off, so they're very easy to change. But the microphone circuit was different, okay? So we had one transformerless microphone, or pair of microphones, because this is a stereo track, and then one uh, second set of microphones was, uh, had a, a transformer-coupled circuit in it. And the, the particular transformer-coupled circuit was designed to overload at moderate SPL. Uh, why? Well, because it sounds different. Okay? It creates these even order harmonics and gives you that kind of thick vintage sound that's really desirable in some cases. Um, but it has a really interesting effect 
because now this is at the same preamp gain, and the microphones have almost the same output level, but you can, I think you can see the difference, right? Look at the, these are the snare drum transients. Look at these up here, and then the same thing here, same groove. There's an 8 to 10 decibel delta there. So this is two different clips. I've cut you know, half of one and half of the other and stuck them together. But the, uh, the transients are much, much lower, like 8 to 10 decibels lower. So it's a pretty interesting effect because um, it's really hard to get 8 to 10 dB of compression uh, out of something without artifacts. All right? So uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute, but, um, but you can clearly see the results. So again, you know, all that changed was the, uh, was the circuit inside the microphone, and yet here's this massive difference in the sound that was recorded. So there's no frequency difference. There's literally just this compression effect, which means, among other things, if this was your track, this first half here, you could turn it up 10 decibels louder before you clip. Now, maybe you want to, maybe you don't, but you could, okay? Whereas this one, those snare peaks are going to hit zero well in advance, which means the rest of your drum track is going to be comparatively quiet. So it's a tool.